Hello guys, this is Joe Legofrick here, and I am going to show you today tips on how to speed up iOS 7 on your iPhone 4. Okay, so the iPhone 4 is almost four years old now. It was released in 2010, and since then it has been an absolutely great phone. I mean, it is a, you know, great, it's been a absolutely wonderful phone. It's really fast, it's got a great screen, it's got an awesome camera, and it's just a really, really nice phone. But the only problem with iOS 7 is that it runs a little bit slow on here. Uh, so, I'm going to show you how to speed up your iOS 7 experience on your iPhone 4. The first tip I have for you is to go into the settings and turn off background app refresh. You'll find this in general, and then go to background app refresh. And you can see I actually have this turned on because of one app that I use, which um, is a fitness app. It uses GPS in the background. But for apps that you don't really need it, turn it off or turn it off altogether. If there's one app that you, you know, if you, uh, you don't have any apps that are using it, um, this one app, however, does use it. But it is simply a GPS thing, and I know when it's running. So the best thing to do is just to turn off all of them, or almost all of them, depending on how many you're willing to sacrifice. Um, the more the better, obviously, and it will definitely speed up your experience because your phone won't be trying to do things in the background. You may not even know it's doing it, but it actually will could still be doing something and you don't even know what it's doing, and it can dramatically um, slow down your performance, and when you turn it off, it can actually really help your performance quite a bit. The next thing that you can do is go into the iTunes and App Store section of your settings app, scroll down to automatic downloads, and turn as many of these off as you're comfortable with. Now, I like to keep music and updates on, uh, but if you have like a lot of apps, then if they're constantly updating, then that could dramatically decrease your system performance. So you might want to turn that off, but I don't have very many apps, so it doesn't really affect me too much. And um, I don't download too much music, so it's not like my phone is going to be constantly downloading music in the background. Uh, but your needs may differ, although I do highly recommend turning off apps and books, especially since on um, one device, like say you have a large capacity iPad, and you download a large app because it, you know your iPad can store it. it. Your phone may try to install this large app, and you may not even be aware of it, and you may end up with like a large chunk of your storage taken away if you have like a lower capacity iPhone, and you may not know why. And you could have this giant app sitting there trying to download in the background when you're trying to talk on the phone, send a quick email, or do something on your phone, and you might not even be aware of that. Um, so I would highly recommend turning off apps because um, you can always go into the cloud anyway and re-download them. Um, so, turning off all of these would be best, uh, but, uh, you know, of course, you can leave some of them on, uh, but turning these off definitely does help system performance on your iPhone 4 with iOS. Another change that you can make in settings is going to General, Spotlight Search, and turn all of these off, or keep only a few of them selected. And you can see here, you can just select, like, a few, and the fewer it has to, search, to go through, the fewer search results that it has to, you know, search your phone for, the better because then the performance will be a lot faster. Um, I recommend just turning it all off completely if you're willing to sacrifice the feature and if you don't really use it that much because that will dramatically increase your performance. For me, the most annoying thing about iOS 7 on my iPhone 4 is the laggy animation. So I'm going to try to show it to you here. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it. But as you can see there, the animation of the apps flying in is pretty slow. So let me show it to you again here. And you can see it's just kind of laggy. It's kind of like stuttery as the app fly in and as the dock pops up. It's a little hard to get on camera, uh, but it is noticeable, trust me. So let me go in here and select the same wallpaper for both my lock screen and my home screen. And watch what happens here. You can see the animation is a lot smoother and um, it's not like, you know, super duper smooth as you would have like on iPhone 5 or 5S or a newer model, but it is noticeably better when you keep the same wallpaper for your lock screen and your home screen. So that is probably my number one tip to remove that annoying lagginess when you're um, unlocking your device. It really, really helps it a lot. 
because your device isn't having to change the wallpaper along with performing the animation of the apps flying in. It just has to have the apps fly in and the wallpaper is the same as it was in the lock screen, so it doesn't have to change anything. So I think that really does help um, the form performance. I think that's why it does. And um, it definitely is my probably my number one tip, or my favorite tip, to remove the annoying lag when you're unlocking the device. Another thing that you can change the settings is going to general accessibility. Scroll down to increase contrast and go ahead and turn that on. Now what this does is improves contrast in some backgrounds to increase legibility. Um, so I'm going to show you my home screen here. When I turn the volume up or down, you can kind of see the clock there. Focus in on it. You can kind of see the clock behind it. And the um, utilities folder, you can kind of see the maps thing through there. And um, you can see a little bit through it. It's a little bit see through. Not the transparent blur, because obviously I guess the P4 processor couldn't handle it like you get in the Apple 4 I sort of up. Um, but, you know, you still get that slight transparency. And then when you swipe up here, you can see you can see the clock icon a little bit there. And then on your notification center, you can see just a tiny bit. It's really hard to see. In fact, it's almost to the point where you can't see it. In fact, it's really, really hard to see in the notification center, but there is just a little bit of it in person. Um, but if you're willing to get rid of that to dramatically increase your, um, just get rid of lag when you're shutting down, just turn on increased contrast. And what this does is turns off the transparency so you can't see anything there. It's just a solid gray background, but what it does is you can see it's much faster now. So you can just like swipe down as much as you want and there's no lag whatsoever, it's just super smooth. So this seems like the best way to get rid of lag when you're you know, swiping down and swiping up to get your notification center and control center. It really does help. So if you're willing to give up that little bit of transparency, it really does help to turn off increased contrast, or to turn on increased contrast and get rid of that transparency. Another place where you'll get lag is when you're opening up apps. So, for example, here in settings, it's kind of hard to see in camera, uh, but it's definitely not as smooth as it is on, like, a newer device. So the best way to get rid of lag altogether is to go into general, accessibility, scroll down to reduce motion, and turn this setting on. This reduces the motion of the user, user interface, including the parallax effect of eye content alerts. They're, they, they don't have parallax on the iPhone 4, but that's just written for all devices. And watch what happens when I go to the home screen here. You can see it's a simple crossfade effect. And the same thing when I open the apps. There's that simple, just basically kind of, it just like disappears. And the same thing when I open my device. Or when I unlock it. You can see there, it pretty much just shows me my icons without any fancy animations. This is the best way to get rid of lag, guys. If you want to have a lag-free device, at least when you're using, you know, just simple, um, at least in the lag um, that you get when you're opening and closing apps and unlocking your device, this is the best way to get rid of the lag. Um, it's not perfect, but it definitely, I think, helps and it almost makes your app seem to open faster because you can see here, I'm going back and forth and it really is simple. There's no lag whatsoever and it actually seems like it's faster. So I really do like the reduced motion, although I do like, I don't mind the lag animations too much um, because as you saw in the previous tip, I, you know, use the same home screen and lock screen. So it, that does help some of the lag quite a bit when opening the device, um, when opening it, uh, unlocking the device. But reduced motion definitely does help and I highly recommend it if you're just sick of the lag animations, it really does help. The final thing that you guys can do is go into general and usage and see what is taking up space on your phone and clear it out. Now, you probably have a lot of unused games sitting around your phone or message conversations that you're not even using anymore or just unnecessary stuff that you don't need that is sitting around your phone. So the best way to um, you know, get rid of it is to go into usage and see what is the culprit. Now, not only will this give you more space for taking pictures or um, just, you know, just give you free space, it will help your system performance because the more free space you have, the faster your phone's performance is going to be. Now, it's not going to be really noticeable, but it does help, and it takes kind of a lot of the workload 
off of your phone in just everyday usage. So, like as you can see here, you can see how much you're, you're using and how much you have free. I recommend keeping around 200 megabytes free because that's you know not too not too little, but it's also not too much. So it's not like a huge amount to ask. Um, but if you have, see here, and like you can see, here's a game that's taking up 46.7 megabytes. You can usually go in there and delete it if you think that, hey, you know, I haven't played that in a while, I don't need it. Um, and then you can see it sorts it by what's taking up the most. So the thing that takes up the most storage on my phone right now is music. Also, um, I take a lot of pictures, so photos take up quite a bit too. Um, but you can just go through yours and see if there's anything you're not using, or if there's anything that you'd be willing to part with to, you know, take the workload off of your phone. Um, by now, I'm at 663 megabytes available, so that's good. Um, but, like, if you're looking at your phone's usage and figuring out that you have, like, only like 100 megabytes available it might be time to go through and um, clear some old stuff out even if you just go through your photo library and delete some duplicates of photos or photos that you don't need just make sure that they're um on a computer or if you actually don't want them anymore you know just um, be sure that you have them in that place um so that you're not deleting them once and for all um, if they're like good pictures um, make sure that you totally don't want them anymore or they're backed up to a good location. okay guys that's it for this video thanks for watching and i do hope these tips help get rid of some lag and increase your performance when using ios 7 on your iphone 4 be sure to comment on this video let me know if you have any tips um, for fellow iphone 4 users who have upgraded to ios 7 let me know what you think of the update if you like it don't like it what you like about it and be sure to like this video as well subscribe for more content like this um i try to publish content quite a bit and uh, the more subscribers i get the better so thank you for your support and um yeah i hope you enjoyed this video be sure to share it with your friends or family who have iphone 4s to just kind of get rid of some lagginess and um, improve system performance because the iphone 4 is still a great phone but even though ios 7 doesn't run perfectly on it uh, i like how apple you know took away the transparency even though it's in the ring um i think it would really like really mess up the iphone 4's processor it would just really freak out on the parallax probably wouldn't work so a lot of these features are for our own goods so that our phones don't become bricks to the point we can't use them just because we have these sort of silly features that we think are so cool but we're probably just free to front up anyway um but anyway that's been seven tips to speed up ios 7 on the iphone 4 and once again thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe